Hello everyone and welcome back. I wanted to provide a quick update, let you guys know where I'm at uh, restoring or rebuilding this little 12-inch uh, electromagnetic dynamic speaker for the Philco 41280. A few photos from the past. Again, you can see the spider's in really bad shape. I'll replace that. The voice coil itself, I thought I was going to uh, actually salvage that, but I elected to uh, build a new voice coil. I'll put a link here in the video um, to uh, kind of describe and show you guys how I went about that. And uh, here, just a little de-rusting on the uh, speaker frame. Um, I finally got just a little bit of break in the weather, then I was able to get half of the, uh, the basket itself into the uh, crock pot itself with a little evapor rust and do it in sections and uh, get it cleaned up. And then I uh, was fortunate enough to have one day where the temperatures got in the low 60s and was able to um, spray a couple coats of paint on it. Not my best job, but uh, the best I could do with the weather conditions that were uh, presented to me. For those out there that followed the previous videos, again, I had to dismantle the frame itself around the uh, fill coil, the humbucking coil. And uh, here I am uh, actually just reproducing that bottom plane piece that will attach itself back to the uh, speaker frame. Again, you see I'm using uh, basic hand tools. I use some uh, aluminum, two inches wide. It's about four and a half inches in length. And here I am just drilling some pilot holes followed by another, I think it's a one and a half inch hole. Again, that center pole piece for the speaker uh, will reside in this area and protrude through that area. And then uh, the secret sauce here will be how to align this center pole piece here back on the uh, speaker frame. So the center pole piece itself is in the middle of the uh, speaker itself. After fabricating the base plate, it's just time really for a dry run. So you can see that's what I'm doing here. I'm laying it um, across uh, from the existing uh, holes that were in the speaker frame itself. Uh, again, there was a little bit of unlevelness there, so I wanted to make sure I had a nice level surface. So again, um, you can see here where I've got everything laid out. I'm selecting my hardware here that I'll use. Again, uh, washer, lock washer, and a uh, little thread locker here that you'll see in just a bit as well. So again, the speaker frame itself, kind of a, a, a draw out around the uh, that bottom plate itself where I'll uh, drill the holes in the speaker uh, frame itself to attach this uh, new bottom plate. You'll see here my uh, dry run continues. Uh, nothing's tightened down at this point in time. Everything's just put there just to make sure it fits well uh, before we snug everything down and then try to figure out the method and procedure that I'll use for uh, finding the center of the speaker uh, itself best I can. Um, you can see here, uh, I've got some uh, shims placed in the uh, center around the magnet itself. I had to do a little reshaping as well as that, that uh, center piece there uh, around the fill coil. Um, it was in uh, bad shape. I didn't realize it was uh, out of round in a few places, so I spent some time doing that. You can see I've got the uh, uh, epoxy out, and I'll be ready here now to attach the uh, top part of the frame get the humbucking coil back in place and the uh, new fill coil that I will and uh, reattach it here, throw some clamps on it and uh, let it set for uh, 24 hours or so. Just a few final shots here of the frame itself. Uh, you can see that center pole piece is protruding just a bit on the, on the frame itself. I didn't have a press or a vise that I could get that back flush. Uh, like it was. So I got it back in best I could with the tools that I had available to me. Uh, I think it's still going to work well. Uh, time will tell. Uh, and you can see here again um, just uh, releasing the clamps or getting ready to uh, just to make certain that the epoxy uh, held and it did. Again I used a, a bow compass or just typical cheap uh, compass here to uh, find the uh, center of the center pole piece which is really critical to make certain that everything is centered when I get ready to uh, recone the speaker. So again, in the beginning, I tried to center this best I could, but uh, it's obvious you need some uh, wiggle room. And uh, here, I've got some adjustment built in and uh, how I did that, again, is by increasing the size of the holes here you can see in the speaker frame that I'm showing. That allows uh, movement of the piece that I'll bolt down or the frame that holds the uh, fill coil and the center pole piece uh, back to the frame itself. 
Here I've got uh, the fasteners in place after identifying the uh, center of the uh, center pole piece and you can see the picture in picture how I went about that and again another look here how uh, I was able to move or shift this around just a bit uh, to find that ideal spot and then I'm going to use some uh, thread locker on two new bolts in the opposite direction snug those down and then I'll release the other two fasteners that I uh, placed on and repeat that uh, same process with the thread locker. And you can see here that I've got all four now fastened down with the uh, thread locker and everything is uh, centered to the best of my ability. After triple checking things here and just making sure I was satisfied and uh, got everything as close as I could, you can see here I'm laying out everything and I'm getting ready to reattach the uh, spider itself. I couldn't find a spider uh, the size that I needed, so I got one just a little larger, and you can see here I am just cutting that. And then uh, I'll use some epoxy here and attach it back to the uh, frame. Again, I use the uh, bow compass or compass there again to uh, understand the uh, center. And then here you can see I'm taking the uh, voice coil that I made and uh, just doing another dry run just to make sure that the voice coil itself uh, fits there in the center of the spider. And uh, just a few little adjustments there along the way. Okay, here you can see again I got the spider placed. I've got the uh, voice coil in. I've got it adjusted to the correct height to mirror the existing uh, speaker uh, placement itself where the voice coil was around the uh, center pole piece. That height is very important. So I tried just to uh, mimic what was there before based on my uh, documentation. Uh, you can see again I've got the shims in place again between the center pole piece and the voice coil to make sure we don't have any rubbing. And uh, you can see again, I've got my epoxy here. I'm placing it around the voice coil on the spider itself. Uh, I've got again the height that was uh, uh, just verified again just to make certain it was uh, spot on or as best I could based on my uh, documentation. I let that set up and then uh, you can see here I uh, poked a couple holes in the speaker cone itself where my uh, flexible uh, braided speaker leads will uh, exit the rear of the uh, speaker comb and uh, again another dry run after the epoxy set up around the uh, the voice coil itself and the spider and uh, just placing it on and uh, continuing the uh, the reconing process I made a few tweaks here again just making sure that the uh, the speaker cone itself was a really nice fit around the uh, new voice coil that I made and you can see that after uh, getting everything uh, fitted the way I wanted it was time to use the epoxy and again I used that same epoxy went back around the voice coil here I'm just cutting some of the uh, flexible uh, speaker leads uh, laid down a, a piece of paper towel there just to uh, protect my uh, speaker cone itself from the uh, solder connections put a little flux on got those soldered up and then used um, some uh, rubber cement and I tried to cover up my uh, voice coil lead wires back to the uh, flex wiring best I could. And uh, you can see I'm sealing the uh, speaker there around. Here's another underneath shot there of the uh, speaker leads uh, before being soldered in. Again, I'm just verifying my uh, connections here, um, making certain that I got everything hooked up correctly, got the new fill coil in place. Again, having to extend those leads off of the fill coil. We'd already talked about the uh, polarity, or my opinion about the polarity of the fill coil, the humbucking coil. Uh, time will tell if I've got uh, that in place, if we hear any excessive hum from the uh, speaker itself. You can see I'm finishing up the wire dressing. Again, I used some of the insulation itself off another piece of wire, pushed it back over the uh, wire, leaving the humbucking coil. Uh, just to clean that up, again, I've got my VOM mount. I'm taking some uh, DC resistance measurements here. Again, this is the uh, DC resistance of the voice coil itself and the humbucking coil in series. Uh, again, taking a little alcohol there, cleaning up these, uh, these four prongs here on the uh, speaker itself just to get the uh, remaining flux off and underneath shot here of the speaker. You can see I left some test point locations there coming off the uh, voice coil that I can easily uh, put my meter on in the future. So I think it cleaned up uh, rather well. Um, satisfied. Here you can see I've got the uh, the gasket on now on the outside. 
and uh, a little more troubleshooting on the radio itself. There's some audio issues around the audio taper. All right, let's take a, uh, a listen now with the uh, new speaker. I've got it plugged in and got my uh, old speaker uh, disconnected. So uh, let's power up the radio here on the Variac and uh, see what we've got. I'll go ahead and uh, speed up the uh, video here as I bring the uh, voltage up while watching the uh, AC current. Okay, my AC voltage looks good. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to the uh, normal line voltage of around 120 volts. And I'm going to probably throw a CL90 in here as well and get a little bit of an uh, uh, inrush relief as well as uh, reduce the voltage by uh, maybe 4 or 5 volts or so. Uh, this radio draws about uh, 0.40 amps of uh, current. So um, let's turn it up and see what we get here out of the speaker. It's early in the morning, so uh, a lot of DX out there still. What do you do when you're married to a non-analytic and everything your husband's doing? I was hoping to try to find some music that uh, just news and everything this time of morning. It's a distant station. The good news is the, uh, the speaker that I spent so much time on, it's working, and that's, uh, I wouldn't call it music to my ears, so I haven't heard any music yet. But and I want you to go back to that mountain with I'd the say, smoke, uh, it's a great sign. the lightning, and the earth. A few birdies on the radio I noticed. Uh, again, I'm not using the uh, tuned loop, uh, loop antenna that's built in. I'm just using a wire antenna. So uh, hopefully some of that will uh, correct itself once I get the uh, radio back in the uh, cabinet itself and hooked up to the uh, loop antenna. Your 41, Georgia, Texas destroys number 64 to state 78. Radio also has a cruise 41 to 15. And there's uh, built-in oscillators uh, for the uh, pre-select. So I have programmed the uh, buttons here for some of the local stations in the area. UCLA 8476, number 11 Butler, handle Seton Hall 6154. Georgetown blows out number 16 Creighton 7151. And 25th ranked Florida rolls past LSU 106. 71. Local scores of note, Wofford snaps UNCG's six-game winning streak, 93-74. All right, she's uh, sounding pretty good. I'm pleased with the outcome of the speaker. It's uh, probably not as uh, as good of quality as a, a new modern day speaker, but uh, I tell you what, the effort that I put into it, and uh, more so just the learning um, from actually doing it was uh, worth it to me. So uh, hopefully others out there that are uh, watching this segment or have watched this segment will uh, not shy away from uh, these type of challenges. Uh, you know, all you can do is, uh, I wouldn't call it fail, just not succeed and then uh, try again or take an alternate path. Thanks again uh, for watching. I'll uh, supply another video update here on the uh, chassis itself in a bit and uh, let you guys know what steps I took to do a uh, kind of a quasi 
repair versus restore, uh, staying within the, uh, the budget of the uh, owner. Until then, take care.